Second Chronicles, the 12th chapter in the first verse. If you have it, say amen. amen. And then we're going to read the 14th verse. Elder Corey is reading in our hearing. And it came to pass uh -huh. when Rehoboam uh -huh. had established the kingdom read. and had strengthened himself, uh -huh. he forsook the law of the Lord. Notice this. When he established the kingdom, notice this, and when he had strengthened himself, then he did what? He forsook the law of the Lord. Amen. He abandoned his covenant with God. Read. And all Israel with him. And those whom he was over. Now go down to the 14th verse. What does it say? And he did evil. And he did evil. Now between the 1st and the 14th verse, amen, in your own time, I encourage you to read it. It describes Rehoboam as an individual who would have humbled himself, so it seemed. Amen. It's no different in today's time when things, amen, seem to rack up against us. We take a posture, amen, of false humility, Amen. We act as if, oh, I don't have a witness yet on today, but we act as if, God, I'm going to cooperate. God, I'm going to obey. God, I'm going to do your will. But in the 14th verse, it says, and he did evil. Read. Because he prepared not his heart. Notice this, because he prepared not his heart to do what? To seek the Lord. To seek the Lord. From that one verse the 14th verse, actually both of those verses. I just want to speak to you from this subject. Prepare now to seek the Lord. Say that with me. Prepare now, now. to seek the Lord. Some of you may be aware that a few weeks ago, my family was blessed to go to Atlanta, Georgia for Thanksgiving. Amen. And it had been quite some time since I had traveled, actually five years in fact, since I had been on a plane. Amen. My wife and children had the pleasure and luxury of going at other times, but five years for me since I had actually been anywhere. So I was somewhat aloof, amen, to the travel process. Don't get me wrong. I understand what to do and how to do. Amen. But something happened going and something happened coming back that I want to share with you on today. When we uh, were leaving on the day of, we were uh, going to be departing out of Denver. Amen. But I got a notification, amen, surprisingly on my phone. And I had never seen this before. Maybe it started, amen, since the last time I had traveled. But the notification I got, it said that if you're going to make your flight, it said you better leave your location now. And I thought, hmm, that's different. And so because we were in Colorado Springs at the time, it made sense to me that we need to get moving. Uh, we had a few hours to get to where we needed to go. And this notification was actually spot on. Amen. If we hadn't left when we left, we probably would have missed the flight. Same thing happened on our return trip. Now, mind you, our return trip, amen, we were scheduled to leave at 7 in the morning. Amen. Coming back from Atlanta to Colorado Springs. So about 4.30, amen, I got a notification on my phone saying that if you're going to make your flight you better leave from your location now. And I thought to myself, now something ain't adding up because now where we are in Atlanta, we were just a few minutes away from the airport where we were staying. We were just around the corner, take no more than 10 minutes to get there. And I thought, well, okay, it is the day after Thanksgiving. We better get moving. And that we did. To my surprise, to our surprise, amen, when we got to the airport, it was mass chaos. Amen. Oh, my goodness. I said, what did we get ourselves into? But by the time we got to where we needed to be, I'm going to cut the story short for sake of time on today. By the time when we got to where we needed to be, we had just got into our seats just in the nick of time. I thought, how did that notification know, amen, when we were just a few minutes away from the airport that you need to leave now? 
And I thought from that perspective, first natural and then spiritual, amen, that there are some things that we need to do spiritually. Because in order to be ready, amen, when Jesus comes, you have got to prepare now. Look at your neighbor and say, prepare now. And find somebody else and tell them, you need to prepare now. Amen. Based on your location, I'm going to speak today uh, from these words. Based on your location, if you don't prepare now, you're going to miss the move of God. Based on your location, you know why I can say that? Because if this phone has the location services uh, turned on, then certainly God knows where we are. Amen. You sitting in church, but your heart is somewhere else. This is why in the, in the book it says, in Isaiah 55 and 6, it says, Seek ye the Lord, notice this, while, while he may be found. It says, call ye upon him while he is near. It goes on to say, let the wicked, amen, forsake his way and the unrighteous men his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And he promised us that he would have mercy on us. You ought to clap your hands right now for the mercy of God. And it says, and to our God, he will abundantly pardon. But I want you to understand on today that in order to get to where you want to go, you just don't get there. You have to prepare yourself to be ready. Notice this, young people. You say, I'm going to college. But you haven't yet taken your SAT test. You haven't yet taken your ACT test. You haven't yet visited with your counselor. You haven't yet, amen, made preparation. I say to the young adult, you say, I'm going to buy a house. Amen. But your credit card is racked high. Amen. At uh, Louis Vuitton and um, some of these other places that I don't even know how to call. Amen. You haven't even checked your credit score. Amen. You're not saving your money. What I'm trying to tell you, amen, is that everything that you go to do, it requires preparation. And Lord, let me not mention marriage. Should you say I'm ready to be married? I'll tell you right now, you're not ready to be married until you have become single. That went over somebody's mind. That went over somebody's head. You have to be single focused. You have to be single-minded. You can't be all over the place. Into everything. And know everybody's business. No. God, if, if, you, if he's preparing you, amen, for marriage, then you are being prepared in such a way that you have separated yourself from things that are not like God. You can't continue to hang with single people and be married. That's Wednesday night pastoral teaching. But it's the truth. Amen. If you're going to be married, then you need to be around married people. Because a single person would tell you, I wouldn't fool with that. That's why they're single. In order to get anything, you must prepare for that thing. Like most of us, we assume that we have plenty of time when in reality, we're already behind time. The Hebrew definition for this word prepare, as it's noted in this verse, it means to determine or to fix. That means that you have to make a choice, a determination in your heart and in your mind that this is what I'm going to do. It means my heart is fixed. David said that in Psalms 57 and 7. He says, my heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. In other words, what he was telling, amen, God, is that before I come into your temple, before I come, amen, into your tabernacle, I have prepared my heart to praise you. You can always tell, amen, I can at least, those who have prepared their hearts to praise God. For whatever reason on today, I'm thankful. I'm not making an excuse. I'm thankful that you came in here with your heart prepared to praise God. 
it speaks to what you did before you got here. It says that you wasn't arguing and fussing and cussing and, and doing all these abominable things before you came to church. You know why? Because you just cannot come before him without a prepared heart. No, if, 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 if the only time you are in God's presence is when you come to church, amen, there is a problem. But when you are in his presence on a continuous basis and you are, amen, praising God and, and you spend time with him through the week and, and you have him on your mind and on your heart and you are doing his will, it's not hard for you to praise him. It's not hard for you to call on him. It's not hard for you to jump up and down and give him, amen, what is due to him because you are, have already prepared yourself. Just ask your neighbor, are you prepared? Amen. We don't notice this. We don't intend to get into mischievous acts. But because we fail to set the Lord before us, the scripture says sin is at your door. So you say, I'm fine. You're not necessarily fine, no. The, 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 the evil of neglecting to prepare your heart, amen, will set up the stage for the enemy to draw you out from the presence of God. Amen. When you neglect to prepare yourself, you are setting yourself up for failure. So in this verse, notice this. In this first verse that we read, Second Chronicles, the 12th chapter in the first verse, I'll read it again. It says, and it came to pass when Rehoboam had established his kingdom and had strengthened himself. Notice this, he forsook the law of the Lord. And this is exactly what the enemy is trying to do, amen, with people on today. People are trying to establish themselves. Oh, yeah. People are trying to strengthen themselves, but they are forsaking, amen, the law of God. It takes something, amen, to be established and strengthened, but also seek God. You have to be a sold out individual, amen, when it comes, amen, to not forgetting God. You have to establish, I said this on last week, you have to establish, amen, a spiritual discipline. You have to make sure, amen, that I'm going to set my alarm clock, amen, an hour before I intend to leave to give God what's due to him. Because your day will start and before you know it, you would not have acknowledged who God is in your life. And the enemy will, amen, he's waiting for the opportunity for the individual, amen, who has not prepared their heart before God. The danger in establishing ourselves, and, and I see this even more now, is that we have so many young people who start in the church, amen, but they forsake the law of God. So they develop in the church, they grow in the church, but now they are on their own. They establish their kingdom. Amen. They, they maybe start a family, but they leave God. They maybe start their career, but they leave God. They try to strengthen themselves, and some of them, amen, have become very successful, but it won't be for long when you leave God out of the picture. This kind of reminds me of the man, amen, in the book of Luke, the 12th chapter. And the scripture says that he looked around and he, he says his ground brought forth plentiful. It brought forth so much, he thought about the next year, 2023. And he said, you know what I'm going to do in 2023? He said, I'm going to build greater barns. And he started thinking within himself. He said, I'm going to be at ease for years. But within that same passage, notice what Jesus said. He said, this night your soul will be required of you. And those bigger things that you intended on building, whose will they be? Notice what he was doing. He was getting ready for uh, the future. He was getting ready, amen, for future years. But he had not prepared himself, amen, for what God had required of him in eternity. The most serious judgments in the Bible are directed against those who continue to sin after receiving God's grace. I'm going to say that again. 
The most serious judgments in the Bible are directed against those who continue to sin after receiving God's grace. The reason why the time in which we're living in now is so critical is because God spared everyone that's in here, that's watching by a television and social media and listening by radio. He has spared all of our lives from this, what we call COVID-19. And so if we go back to a place, a position, amen, in which we had forsaken God before COVID-19 and we go back to that place, you're in dangerous territory. Because God has given us an opportunity, amen, that I'm not going to go back to church the same way I used to come to church. We got rid of a lot of stuff. We don't do a lot of things that we used to do before COVID-19. We can't do that. No, God was speaking to the church first. Judgment has begun at the house of God. We had to repent and say, God, we were wasting a lot of time. We were honoring everybody but you. We were doing everything else but coming into your house and giving you the praise and glory that's due to your name. So we had to change things. Not only should we do it at the church, but you should do it at the personal level. You ought to be different because of COVID. You ought not carry a grudge that you used to carry before COVID. Why? Because you're still living. And it ain't because you're good. Amen. It's because he's God and he had mercy on you. So, so what happens is there comes a time when there is no more opportunity. Listen to this. There is no more opportunity for any more repentance. Because God said, now I've given you another chance. Why would you go back to those uh, abominable things? What is uh, further discouraging about Rehoboam is that he never really quite cast off God. In other words, he didn't completely get rid of him. You know, he, it's like us, I, I'm still saved. We have, well, we know. Nobody's, you know, questioning your salvation, but you're not the same person. So, so, so he didn't quite cast off God because the scripture says, amen, that he humbled himself, but yet he did evil. See, this is the, the quandary that the enemy keeps us in. He, he wants you to be comfortable enough to think that it's okay to go to church, amen, and do the church thing on Sunday. And then, you know, I'm back to being who I am. You can't do that. God is not winking at that. We're in another era now. You must recognize that COVID was just the presentation. It was just the icebreaker in the introduction of what will happen next. We're in the last month of the year, but we don't know if we'll see 2023. And should we see it, we don't know what 2023 will hold. So, 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 so the scripture says something very specific. It, it says, it says that he did evil. Notice this in the 14th verse. He did evil because why? Because he did not prepare. Read that, Elder Corey. What did it say? And he did evil. He did evil. Uh huh. Because he prepared not his heart. Because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. To seek the Lord. <laughs> Notice this. All true and successful seeking of the Lord comes from a prepared heart. The heart is always the part that makes our hearing, our believing, our praying, and our doing right or wrong. Come on, you can do all the right things but have it from a corrupt heart. So you can come in here, amen, and do what we've been taught to do, do what we've been trained to do, do what we've seen others do. But if your heart isn't right, it's wrong before God. So he brings us to a place. And from that verse, amen, he lets us know that evil, amen, consumed Rehoboam. You can be doing everything that you should be doing, but if, amen, you are not preparing your heart, amen, for, before God, evil will consume you. I lost somebody there. They, 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 they're trying to figure out what, how, how does that make sense? 
How is it possible? Amen. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you three ways. If you don't prepare your heart to seek the Lord, amen, you will fall into very uh, sensual or evil habits. Come on. I'm saved, but, you know, just a little jack on the side. Oh, I'm saved. Nobody can tell me I'm saved, but, you know, every now and again, I just need to, you know, let it all out. This is what happened to Rehoboam. He did evil. Why? Amen. Because he wasn't intentional about preparing his heart. You have to be intentional. You cannot give place, amen, to the devil. And all you, though you've been saved, amen, some of you, most of your life, amen, the enemy is looking for, he, he's looking for the opportunity, amen, to take over. Take over your thoughts. Amen. Anytime something comes to my mind, I have to renounce it. I have to announce every vain thought and imagination immediately and say, you will not take residence in this vessel of the Holy Ghost. That's why when I come before God, I'm prepared to praise him. No, but if you've been dwelling in, 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 in things that you shouldn't be, you can't come before God's presence like that. No. It makes it difficult. You're conflicted within yourself. That's number one. The, 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 the next thing that the enemy will do is he will provide you companionship that is against, amen, what God will provide for you. Come on, you, 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 need, you need a friend. Come on, you need somebody to, to hang out with. And before you know it, amen, they have drawn you into something that you should not be a part of. Last thing is satanic temptation. The enemy will be as bold as he uh, wants to be, amen, when you have allowed, amen, the other two to take residence in your heart. And he will pull you away from the things that God has for you. Notice what it says in Hebrews, the third chapter, in the 12th verse. It says, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart. Notice this, because an evil heart will produce unbelief. You know what happens when you have an evil heart? It makes everything about you corrupt. Amen. Brother Janelle is sitting there looking at me. If I have an evil heart, I'll be like, why is he staring at me like that? No, evil twists everything and makes it seem like it's something that it's not. That's what evil does. And so you can be looking at, and that person didn't even, brother, now ain't thinking about me. But when you have an evil heart, you will think everybody hates you. Come on, you, you'll think that person don't like it. That person is jealous. They, everybody don't want what you got. It ain't all that anyway. Be honest with yourself. Everybody don't want what you got. But when you have an evil heart, amen, you can't even think straight. You can't even act right, amen, because your heart is corrupt. And, and, and what comes out of your heart, it will proceed out of your mouth. So in, in, in Hebrews, the third chapter, in the 12th verse, notice this. It says, lest there be in any of you a heart, an evil heart of unbelief. And it says, notice this, you will depart from the living God. This is what happened to Rehoboam. Rehoboam, if you don't already know, he was the grandson, amen, of David, the son of Solomon. And by now you would understand, amen, that the kingdom was given to him in Jeroboam, but the kingdom was divided. Ten tribes in the northern and two in the southern. And so what was given to him, although he was that close, notice this, amen, to the throne through David and Solomon, he still departed. Sometimes you can grow up in the pastor's house. You can grow up in the missionary's house. You can grow up in church and be the biggest devil in hell. So 
so, so, so what happens is the enemy, and I've said this time and again, I have to share it again today. His ultimate goal is to get you to leave God. This is why we don't believe in once saved, always saved. I lost the whole church on that one. Let me tell you one reason why we don't believe in once saved, always saved. Because everybody say, well, you know, and when God saves you, it's forever. But I want you to let, I want you to understand and I want you to know, amen, that God will never violate your will. So if you allow the enemy to come into your heart and corrupt it and make it evil, you will walk away from God yourself. And you'll bust hell wide open. That's why it's not once saved and always saved. So he wants to pull you away. He wants to get you away from the living God. Where Are you there, Elder Corey, the 13th verse? But exhort, one notice this, but exhort, this is why we have to encourage the church, amen, especially during this season of the pandemic, amen, go hug your neighbor. We've been so isolated, we've been so, uh, we, we, we've been so separated for so long, amen, that we, we just look at each other wrong. We do. Amen, if you ain't got it yet, just hugging me ain't going, that ain't going to happen. Come on now, I'm just saying. So he says, exhort one another. Daily. 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 Encourage your brother, encourage your sister. And let them know, amen, we're in this fight together. And the enemy, he comes to deceive you. He wants to bring you from the place, amen, that God has ordained for you to be in. So he says, exhort one another daily while it's what? Notice what he says, while it's called today. Why would he say that? He says, he says, while it's called today, because we don't know if we'll ever see tomorrow. Read on. Uh -huh. So what happens? This is what happens when, when an evil heart ha uh, comes into us. Amen. It, just like we talked about Lucifer. Amen. It says that he was perfect until. Until. You were doing good until. And what the enemy wants to do is he wants to now harden your heart. He wants to take, amen, that little incident and create a root of bitterness that you cannot uproot. That's why you have to stay delivered. That's why you have to keep a praise on your heart. That's why you can't allow, amen, gossip and things that, that, that want to creep in, amen, to corrupt and contaminate your mind and your spirit. It prevents you from being in the place that God would have you. So he says, what? While it's called today, read. Lest any of you be hardened. Lest any of you be hardened through what? Through the deceitfulness of sin. Through the deceitfulness of sin. I got to close because my time is up. But what I want you to understand on today is what God wants us to do specifically is we have to intentionally prepare our hearts. You don't wait, amen, for your heart to be prepared when some tragedy comes into your life. No, you prepare your heart, amen, before anything happens so that you will be prepared and you have a good working relationship with your Lord and Savior. Come on, say with me, prepare now to seek the Lord. Prepare now. It was so interesting how the Lord gave me this message. And I said, Lord, this seems to be a New Year's message. This seems to be a message for New Year's. And he said, that's just it. That's the point. He said, you don't wait till you get to New Year's to prepare for New Year's. I said, oh! Come on, I, I had a senior moment, whatever that is. He said, I want, you to, I want you to teach that now because I want you to be ready for New Year's. See, this is what happened. This is, this is why when I got that notification on my phone, it said, if you don't prepare now, if you don't leave your location now, you're going to miss your flight. Listen to what God is saying. He's saying, if you don't prepare now, if you don't do it, that's right. Now, everybody say now. now. 
if you don't do it now, then what happens? Notice what's going to happen. When that time comes, you're going to miss it. Let me give you one example. Hey Amen. You remember the five foolish and the five wise versions? Now notice they all had a lamp, but they didn't all have oil. You remember the story? So those who had the oil, they were ready. I want you to get that real quick. They were ready when the Jesus came. But notice this. Those who were foolish, they had went out at the time to buy. They had went out, amen, right before the store was closing, trying to say, can I get some of that oil? What, Matthew 25 and verse, well, I'll go read the ninth verse, and I'm going to close out on this. But the wise answered, saying, uh-huh. not so. So what happened? Why did they say not so? Because the foolish asked them for some of their oil. And so their response to that was not so. Why? Because you should have prepared when you had the opportunity. So they said what? Not so. Not so, lest there be not enough for So them. I don't have enough for me and you. And you. Read. But go ye rather to them that sell uh -huh. and buy for yourselves. And buy for yourselves. So what does the 10th verse say? And while they went to so buy, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. The bridegroom came. Yes. Yes. Amen. They're trying to find a church. They're trying to find a priest. They're trying to find a minister. Somebody to pray for me. That exists now, don't you know? Somebody is looking for somebody to pray for them. When somebody was trying to reach them all their life. You may come to a point in your life where you cannot find all from someone else. You better have it yourself. You may, you may not be able to reach your Sunday school teacher. You better not be able to reach your youth leader. You, better not, you, may, you may not be able to reach, amen, your prayer partner. You better have all for yourself. So while they were gone, the bridegroom came. What does it say? And they that were ready. And they that were ready. Notice this. So those that were ready, it's because they prepared when they had the opportunity. Those that were ready, they went what? In with him. They went in with him. And then what happened? To the marriage and the door was shut. Notice this. The door was shut. I want to prophetically speak to you again today. Amen. And let you know that the doors are going to be shut again. You better praise God while you can. You better, you better give him everything that you possibly can. Don't you know the doors were shut? Don't you know and understand, amen, what God is trying to tell us and let us see? Amen. And he's given us an opportunity. So he says what? He says, prepare now. You will do evil, amen, without even in, intending on doing it. If you don't intentionally prepare your heart. I don't care how saved you think you are. If enough things rack up against you, you will curse God. Come on. Peter thought he was strong. Lord, I'll go with you. He said, look, before that cock crowed three times. You don't know how wicked your flesh is. That's why you have to prepare your heart. And do it when? Do it now. So the door was shut in what? What does it say? Is that it? Afterward came also other virgins. Uh huh. Saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And they tried to get in. Lord, open up to us. But he answered and said, Uh huh. I say unto you, uh huh. I know you not. I know you not. Come on, rest on your feet. Rest on your feet.